the watches you have already crossed the line so don't be questioning the line you have already crossed you want to jump ship and go back why why do you want to go back to where you they just delivered you from lord have mercy father may you never be that kind of person like we said brothers and sisters more than ever even as i miss highly still comes forth to bring the word of the lord to you be ready know yourself Contain yourself, prepare yourself. Let the capacity of your expectation never be cut off and make sure that you do not go home the same. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us welcome our most highly esteemed. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to thank the person of the Holy Spirit for the privilege to be here. And also, we want to thank our Father, Papa Joshua. So we love you, Papa. Amen and amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the power, all the praise, all the majesty, and the dominion forevermore. The maker of the heavens and the earth, and the seas, and everything that in them is. Lord, unto you are we gathered. Teach us, reveal secrets to us. May our hearts indict a good matter. And may we leave this class better than the way we came. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, save souls tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Champion, shout fire. Hallelujah. You are the mighty man in God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Well, you don't sound like the Lord has been fighting. When you sing, do you listen to what you say? Because some of you, if you listen to what you say, you will sing as you should. Telling the Lord is the mighty man in battle is because I know he has been fighting on my battles. But if he hasn't, then maybe that's why you don't sing it as you should. Blessed be God. The Lord has made me a winner every time. I want to introduce you to a discourse. And of course, there are several lessons we've started. So we'll be complementing them because uh, there's need for us to do that way so that <coughs> sometimes by listening to a new lesson, it can give you a better understanding of what is being or what has been previously discussed in other lessons. Yes. How many of you agree with us? Yes. Uh, yes. I want to introduce you to the subject Jesus' mistakes. Jesus' mistakes. Yes. Because one of the things people don't know is that Jesus made a lot of mistakes in his life. Yes, The perfection people give to Jesus today 
In fact, the English language for the word perfect will mean someone, something or someone without errors. Yes. 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 Please answer. Yes. 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 But the world we live in today, we improve on everything. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Do we still drive the cars of the 1920s? No. Do we still live in houses of the 1200s? No. No. Because those guys were living in tents. But you improve. But in that day, that was a stage of perfection for them, as it was. And so they'll be amazed to see that the world has improved beyond what it is. Yes, sir. And today, with the way the world is moving so fast, you improve, quite frankly, maybe every month or every quarter. <laughs> maybe every year. You'll agree that the phones they, they used in 2000 is not the same as the one being used today. Because those phones were very, very big. It could cover your whole face. <laughs> so you see, even the definition of the word perfect is really not accurate. Because by that understanding, there's no perfection in the world because everything is being improved upon. Yes, yes, there's nothing that's perfect. Please answer, all right? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. At least Dickness Joy is the youngest person in our midst here. Yes, sir. That's the truth. Yes, sir. Because she's a great grandmother. Yes, sir. But she will tell you that the hairstyles they make today is not the kind of hairstyles they used to make no. then. No. You see why she's the youngest person in our midst. But you now, you have grown. <laughs> because Dickness Joy did not know the kind of hairstyle you people have today. Yes. But we improve every day. We improve yes. every day. So you see why there's no perfection in the world. Rather, we are all striving to attaining perfection. Yes. How many of you agree? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible says it gives some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Go there, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11. Let's go there, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11. The Bible says, and he gives some to be what? Apostles. Some to be what? Prophets. Some to be what? Exactly. Evangelists. Some to be what? Pastors. Pastors and others to be what? Teachers. Teachers. For what reason? For the, For the perfecting of the saints. Yes. So no saint is perfect. Yes. But you see, the way it is being interpreted today, it is interpreted as every saint is someone who has attained perfection. And some, their definition of perfection is uh, death. You see? So they say because the person served God and died, the person is Saint Marcus, yes. Saint Barnabas, yes. Saint Jesus. Yes. If death is what makes one a saint, then what's the need for the apostles? prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Are those ones dead or they are very much alive? They are very much alive. Well, let's still find out whether he's not talking about death. Read. He says, and he gives some to be what? Apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Stop. Ministry, do you do it when you are dead or you do it while you are alive? 
So who are to do the ministry? The saints. The saints. So which means you ought to be alive. Yes, sir. So you don't need to die to attain sainthood. Yes, So we can say saint dickiness joy. Yes. Yes. Somebody say, well, brother, I know you are not a saint. Because from your stories, we know you are not a saint. Well, I don't need to be a saint. I'm a prophet and a teacher. I'm to perfect you. So that you can be a better saint. Not for yourself, for this ministry. <laughs> so it's good. I even like it that I'm not, you don't call me a saint. At least I'm a prophet and a teacher. Amen. There are proofs to show you ah, yes, sir. the office that I sit on. Yes, sir. And he didn't say the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers are saints. He said, but they have been sent to perfect saints. Yes, sir. So you that is saying I'm not a saint, you are the saint, it is true. We are to even perfect you. Yes, Hi, yes, what kind of saint are you? You this imperfect sins. That's what it will mean. He said, but we have to perfect you so that you can do the work of the ministry. Yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay. If that is true, it means Jesus himself was not a saint. Because he was perfecting the apostles. So that they can do the work of the ministry while he is gone. And Jesus was called the chief apostle. Yes, sir. When he casted out devils, they said, who is this man? He said, the prophet from Nazareth. Yes, so he was a prophet. Yes. And then he went about preaching, which means he was an evangelist. Yes, then he called himself the good shepherd. Shepherd means pastor. He acknowledged, I'm the good pastor. And then the Bible says, he went about teaching. Yes. So he was a good teacher. So he fulfilled all the five-fold ministry gifts. That is why the Bible says he received the spirit. Because each office has a spirit. He received the spirit without measure. For what reason? To perfect in this sense. But notice. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith. Have we attained it yet? No. Please answer now. No. It says all, oh, irrespective of the denomination. Have we all come in the unity of the same persuasion? No. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Now notice, unto a perfect man. We are to reach that goal. Oh. Are we there yet? No. no. But you know there are preachers who preach that we have we are already perfect in Christ Jesus. Oh. But that's a lie. Yes, Otherwise, Paul is stupid to say what he said here in Ephesians chapter four, verses eleven. And if we are already perfect in Christ, then we don't need apostles, we don't need prophets, we don't need evangelists. We don't need pastors. We don't need, we don't need teachers at all. Because the reason why you have the prophet, the apostle, the prophet, because there are people who say, well, what makes you an apostle? Why do we need apostles? I can read Bible for myself. I can study the word of God for myself. You are a big fool. Because the Bible says, you need an apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher to perfect you. Their presence around you is a proof that you are a saint. But you need to be perfected. And it didn't tell you when the perfection ends. You are still being perfected. It says till we all, all together come unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the statue of Christ. Blessed be God. So, settle it. We have not attained perfection yet. But we are being what? Perfected. So, in the course of being perfected, there are mistakes you will make along the way. Like Jesus did too. Because Jesus was not born a perfect man. He had to also learn it, 
grow into it. That is why the Bible says it was his custom to take the writings of Isaiah to read. And he did that often. He even went to look for the one that was more than a prophet, yes. John the Baptist. Yes. Went in search of him. And through John the Baptist, he received the Spirit. Come on. If, 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 why would Jesus need to do that? Why would he need John the Baptist? Why would he need John the Baptist? He said to fulfill all righteousness. So the fulfillment of righteousness is in the hands of John the Baptist. That would tell you that even Jesus was also being perfected too. But why do we need the guidance of these fivefold ministry gifts? Now, does that mean that you will go to one church when you say <laughs> Apostle yeah. Theophilus is the general overseer of ABC ministry. So you say, the Bible says we must go through the five. So I must go and meet Apostle Theophilus. Then after three years, because Jesus took the disciples, taught them for three years, you now leave, you say, I learned that prophet Papa Joshua Aguila is there. Let me go and meet him. And then after that, you now move. Say, Evangelist Ray, I'm bonk you. Ah, he, he, he didn't even wait for me to, to finish my tenure. My, with prophet Papa Joshua Aguila, he just died early. Hey, which evangelist can teach me now? Okay, they say evangelist uh, Daniel Kalande. Let me go and meet him <laughs> so that he can teach me. I'll give him three years so that I can know how to do missions in Africa. How about America? Um, then after that, say, um, which pastor? There are, there are many pastors. Okay, let me go and meet Pastor Benny here. After ben, Pastor Benny, let me look for one teacher. No, that's not what he's talking about. It doesn't mean you should jump from one ministry to another ministry. No. Look at verses 12 again. Hey. He says, we say verse, okay, verses 11. He gave some, some, some saints. He gave them an apostle. Some saints. Yes, he gave them the, a prophet. Yes, that means that's all they need. Yes, For some saints, he gave them an apostle. Yes, that's all they need. Yes, they don't even need the prophet. They don't need the all, the apostle God has given them is all yes, they need. Yes, For some, he gave them evangelist. Yes, that's all they need. Yes, For some, he gave them pastors. Yes, that's all they need. And then for some. He gave them teachers. That's all they need. And as a matter of fact, they will all be perfected if they remain with the one God has given them. Yes, sir, so they don't need to jump. Yes. In fact, for some, some like that, who were given an apostle, that apostle can't even be sitting in three offices. Wow. Yes. Like Paul. Paul was a preacher, a teacher. He was first a, a preacher, which everyone has been called to do. Then he was what? A teacher. He was an apostle a, a, and what? A teacher. And of course he was an evangelist. He went about doing missions. So he was an apostle evangelist. He was an apostle teacher and evangelist. Because if you read it this way, it will look like the office of the teacher is the last. Actually, the office of the pastor is the last. Go to First Corinthians. Go to First Corinthians chapter 12. Let's be fast, please. First Corinthians chapter 12. <clears throat> let's read from verses 28. Okay, let, let's start from verses 27. He said, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Now, look at the next line. And God has set in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers. You see that? After that, God miracles and God. Yeah, he's talking about miracles. He's talking about the evangelist, gifts of healings. He's still with it. Then government. Government is pastors. Helps. He's talking about deacons. So, you see, it is actually, he said, notice how God set them. God gave the gifts, and the same God set them in the church. This is how they operate. 
you will have the apostles first, followed by the prophets, before teachers, then evangelists, then, then pastors. So he's not talking about some of the school teachers when he says teachers. He's talking about an office. And if you study when Paul began his ministry, um, well, he was doing the ministry. In Antioch, the Bible says there were prophets and teachers. Prophets and teachers. They were always together. Prophets and teachers yeah. together. Prophets and teachers together. Because a prophet can say something that you will need a teacher to explain. Yes. The prophet tells you what. The teacher tells you how and why and how. So, you need them. Now, look at, look at, look at verses 29. Read. Are all, prof are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers. See, he repeats it again the second time. In the same order. So you have the apostles, the prophets, and the teachers. See it. You have the apostles, the prophets, and the teachers. And of course, the rest of the ministry give. Why? Because the saints need to be perfect. Now, go back to Ephesians chapter 4. Let's be fast, please. We've not entered where we want to enter, but we just want to introduce it to you. He says in verses 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all, the word edify means to build the church. Oh, yes. You know, sometimes when you hear some minister say, I built this ministry, that's wrong. Because you are not supposed to build the ministry. It is the saints that are to build the ministry. You are to perfect them. As you perfect them, they do the work of the ministry and build the church, the body of Christ. You know, some people say, pastor should follow us too to evangelism on the street. No, pastor is perfecting you so that you can be a better evangelist on the streets. You will not see where the apostles were on the streets. After the Holy Spirit came. No, rather they were teaching the saints in the churches. They, the saints went outside to go and draw many. And if the pastor chooses to follow you on the street to do, an, uh, to do evangelism, praise God. It is because he wants to. Yes. So he said, he should teach us how to win souls. He didn't teach you how to eat. He <laughs> didn't teach you how to make friends. <laughs> Did your pastor teach you how to make friends? No. Please answer. Now. Did your pastor... <laughs> Eh? Did your pastor teach you how to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? <laughs> so the pastor should teach you how to talk to people and bring them to church. Don't be deceptive in your position sometimes. Don't be. Don't pretend you as though you don't know how to talk to people. So the pastor should teach you how to talk to people. And you know you have friends who will do anything for you because of your influence in their lives. And pastor should not teach you how to bring them to church. You're just deceiving yourself. It just meant that you never wanted to do anything. And it's okay. Just say, I don't want to do anything. But to say, pastor should come and teach you. Really. But then, he says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. In Ephesians, he talked about the fullness of God. Now he's talking about the fullness of Christ. Right? Why, is, why does God want us, why does God give you an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher? To perfect you so that you can do the ministry, right? Yes. And as you do the work of the ministry, you grow. Yes. So people think that spiritual growth is when you just keep writing notes, no. taking sermons. No. He says as you take sermons, as you learn, you do the work. Yes. So that's the only way you can grow. But if you're just gathering knowledge without doing anything in the house of God, he says you can't grow. Exactly. Because one thing God doesn't desire for any Christian is in verses 14. Read verses 14. That we, that we have, 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 have
and by the power with every wind of doctrine, by the state of man and the craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You see that? He said you'll be a victim of deception if you remain a child. You may even be different from Satan. Satan said he goes to and fro. You'll be going to and fro in your life. That's why I see some people move from one church to another. See that? He says that we henceforth, from this day, decide it. Yes, you are not going to remain a child. I, 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 don't I, don't want to, I don't want. I'm not going to be a child. That one man of God will say this, another man of God will oppose, and you say, which one should we take exactly. now? No. Paul says, stop it. Decide where you want to be. Yes. A man of God says, it's good to pay your tithe. Another one says, I don't believe in paying tithe. I say, so which one are we going to believe now? Paul says, stop it. What God doesn't want you to be a victim of is this. Where you'll be going to and fro. This one is saying this, the other one is saying contrary. Why don't you just remain in one place? I know people who tell me there's no need for a spiritual father. Yeah. And I just laugh and I walk away. Huh? Yeah. The person you just talked about now yeah. likes to come and prophesy to me all the time. And I always laugh. You want to come and prophesy to me? Do you understand? And he, was, he likes to waste my time on it. That's why I don't talk to him. The person she talked about is true. There are people like that. Do you understand? But I'm not a child. I'm not a child. If there's no need for a spiritual father, why did Paul say, I give birth to you in the spirit? He said, my little children whom I travel for, until Christ be fully formed in you. He said, I'm still talking about the fullness of Christ. He said, I travel for you and I give birth to you. He said, even if you have 10,000 instructors, you do not have many fathers. He said, I fathered you. He told them. He called them children. I give birth to you. He said, even if an angel comes to tell you anything contrary to what I've already, that I, to what I've already said, he said, let that angel be cursed, even if he yes. came from heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why? Because Paul didn't want this, his, his folks to be tossed to and fro. Yes. That's why he calls it bewitchment. Yes. He said, oh foolish Galatians, who bewitched you? You started out in the spirit. Are you not being perfected in the flesh? Somebody, a pastor, who used to be part of us. Why is it that he, the pastor came to me to, why is it that you don't preach Papa Joshua Gila's message? I said, Papa Joshua Gila's message. I understand it more than you. Exactly. You don't even understand jack of what Papa Joshua Gila is saying. I said, even the one in Papa Joshua Gila is preaching to the general public, you, you this pastor, you don't even understand what he's saying. The higher ones, you, you, you can't, if you don't even understand what he's even preaching, is it the higher one? I said, Papa Joshua Gila's message, I understand it better. <laughs> and the person said, why? Why do you say so? I said, because I'm his intense style. Exactly. Do you understand? Your intense style is part of your body. Paul said to Onesimus, you are my intense style. So I'm Papa Joshua Gila's intense style. I'm part of that body. I understand his message more than you. And that message is working for me. It's not even working in your own life. You, this pastor that is talking about Papa Joshua Gila's message, it's not even working in your own life. It's working in my life. And you know. So you go and say that you don't know Jack. You think you are a lawyer. You are not a lawyer, Jack. You are a hypocrite. And don't think the man of God doesn't know. <laughs> One day, when our papa came to America, so <laughs> then we had my lawyer. He was sitting. Some people came to greet him. Some pastors. So he was sitting. He crossed his leg. And, and, and I, while we were organizing things, he said, no, 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 come, come, come. He, he sent for me. He said they should go and call me. So I came. I said, yes, sir. He said, come and sit next to me. So I sat down. 
I said, sir, <laughs> I didn't want to say, I said, sir, no. So she sit down, sit next to me. I want to talk to you. I want to tell you something. Okay. Then some pastors came. They came, they met down, they greeted them. Uh, they greeted our papa. They were saying, they were sowing seeds. He was looking at, he prayed for them. Then he whispered. When they left, he said, you see this pastor? Say, don't mind them. If they have an opportunity, they'll keep me here. <laughs> <laughs> he said, they lie. He said, but also, I'm teaching you, flow with oh, them. I want it. Yes. Wow. Yeah, flow with them. Yes. Then he now told me, one of them will call you after this program, two weeks later, and tell you they want to sow a seed. Don't collect it all. Mm -hmm. They want to set traps. So I laugh. I said, no problem, sir. So he said, that. So don't, don't think that Joshua Aguilar does not even know who is coming before him. No. One time we did ask him, I said, sir, why is it that you can't just tell this person that, this person, why are you a hypocrite? He says, how many battles would you like to keep fighting? He says, sometimes you just pretend to have lost a battle. Let them feel like they won. Then you know you don't have to fight that battle, knowing that <laughs> you made them believe that they won. See, it's true. So don't think the man of God doesn't know who is coming before him. <laughs> All right, let's mind our business here. He says he doesn't want you to be tossed to and fro. Okay. Jesus certainly was not somebody you could toss to and fro, no doubt. But, but Jesus made a lot of mistakes in his life. Now, when the Bible talks about the perfection of Jesus, he is not talking about Jesus was without error. He is talking about maturity. The word perfect means maturity. Yes. Telios. Telios. To come to full maturity. That's the Greek word, telios. And you can never attain it without making mistakes. Go to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Let's read from verses 7. Okay, let's start from verses 5. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee, and he said, also in another place, thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up with strong crying and tears, okay, read. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he had suffered. And being made perfect. You see that? He learned so that he can come unto perfection. Yes. And you can never learn without making mistakes. Amen. Have you ever seen anyone who ever learned something without no. making mistakes? No. Amen. Hey now don't be a hypocrite now. No. It's true, you may say, but I disagree with you. Jesus never made a mistake. Then why did he need to learn? Why did he need to learn? You know, some people, this is another mistake Christians make. They think that even when Jesus came, even from babyhood, he knew everything. Then why did he need to learn? See, the Bible says Jesus had to even learn how to obey. How? By the things he suffered. He's talking about discipline. Is discipline fun? No. no. Please answer now. No. When you are, please, uh, let's close. Let's close. No. Is discipline fun? No. No. When, But the Bible says Jesus had to learn 
Obedience. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He had to learn it. Which means there were occasions where he was insolent. Yeah. He was disrespectful. Yes. But he had to learn it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because if you must have people who obey you, yeah. you must learn to obey. Yes, sir. Jesus had to learn. And that learning brought him to the state of what? Perfection. Yes, Maturity. Maturity. Yes, That's the word. Yes, sir. Don't think he was, don't, don't think here the word perfect means he was without errors. Here he's talking about maturity. Telios. And so because of that, he became the author of eternal salvation unto them that obey him. Question, why did Paul have to even say this to the Hebrew church? Read verses 11, you'll see something. Read, read verses 11, read. Of whom we have many things to say. Stop. He's, he's talking about Jesus. He said, there are still many things I like to say about him. But, but, but why? Of whom we have many things to say and have to be altered. But seeing that you are dull of hearing. See, you are fools. There's no point. There are many things we can say about Jesus. But, but you, you are dull. So he came down to a lower level. And those lower level, in trying to explain to them Simple, simple things. Today, many in the churches call those things heavy revelations. He said, These people are dull. The Hebrew church, they were all dull people. And he began to tell them, Even Jesus was not this stupid. Although he even had to learn to obey. Although he suffered, though, they disciplined him. That's how he grew into maturity. Now, he's quoting them for the same thing. He says, for when, for when you ought to be teachers. See that? When you ought to be those who are perfecting others now. See the next thing. You are still expecting us to come and teach you the basic principles. So why you ought to have been a pastor by now? It means these people were those who were not willing to learn. Oh. He is saying, and he's telling them, the Jesus you say you admire, the Jesus you say you are following, had to even learn to grow into maturity. You don't even want to learn. How would you become matured? And by now you should have been matured. You should be the one teaching others. Because the Jesus you say you are following also had to learn. But today, the way Jesus is being preached about in the churches is that Jesus was just a clean, cut, error-free person. Yes. He, was, he was the most perfect man on earth. Yes. Really? If he was, why did he need to be reading the writings of Isaiah? That's true. That's true. Why did he even need to learn? Somebody said he wanted to learn human nature. Learn human nature? I thought you said he was a human being. Yeah, so let, let's start it. Let, 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 instead of, let, 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 let's, let's take our steps back. Let, let's start looking at this this way. Before we go into details, at looking at, uh, before we go into exhaustive, inexhaustive details actually, because you can't exhaust it. The inexhaustive details of the mistakes Jesus made. It would be better for us to start by looking at the mistakes God made. Because God made mistakes. And if God did make mistakes, and God acknowledged it by himself, who is Jesus that will not make mistakes? Then? So before you start disagreeing that Jesus never made a mistake, let's take you to scriptures and look at the mistakes God himself made. And if God made mistakes, then you cannot say Jesus did not make mistakes. Except you want to say Jesus is greater than God. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> Go to Genesis chapter 6. No. See, because th this, this thing, you, you need to begin to look at, you, you need to begin to look at even some of the mistakes. You know, of course, sometimes we made up a lot of mistakes. Like for me personally, I've made a lot of mistakes. But you see, one of the things people do is that 
You have people who like to remind you of the mistakes you made and they take you to the mistakes you made many, many years ago. Listen, the truth of the matter is that welcome into the fraternity of God because God made mistakes too. And God unashamedly acknowledged that he made mistakes. And God never felt, felt depressed like you are trying to feel now because of the mistakes you made. You know, because there's a way somebody can remind you of the mistakes you made and it can drive you into depression, into sadness, into unforgiveness for yourself. Well, even God himself made mistakes and didn't treat himself that way. Somebody said, but if God did it, then I shouldn't treat myself that way. That's the truth. Because the more you remain in that condition, the more mistakes you still make. Now, let's look at this. Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. You know, there's a pastor who heard us teach one time, and we were talking about Jesus. Oh, and he was watching us live on Facebook. And um, he began to, I, I actually didn't know, but he was challenging some of the things we were teaching. Yes. And I recall it was Pastor Eunice, that was, and um, Pastor Christian, that responded to him on Facebook and said, hey, hey, excuse me, sir. This is even the part three of what the preacher is preaching. Why don't you care to even ask for the part one of the message? Or part two of the message? And you, we saw when you just came online. And you started criticizing. You didn't even know how he began. And you're already criticizing. He said, no, no, no. It's an established father, not that. So after the service, they told me about it. So I said, okay, let me, let me even look out for this pastor. I read his comments. Then the Holy Spirit whispered to me, that's a fool. <laughs> because fools, the Bible says, make haste in their judgments. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Fools, the Bible says, make haste in their judgment. So I decided to even check his ministry. I went to his website. I saw his ministry. I said, hey, he has a good platform. God has blessed him. I said, but I wonder the kind of people he's raising. He has cameras, he has everything. I say, ah, this one is blessed. He has a good platform. But I don't think he has any message. But he has people who follow him. And they all look like him. <laughs> come to find out, he's actually even from the town I come from in the flesh. I say, ah, the craft spirit is working in his life. See, because I took time to check that pastor. Then the Holy Spirit now whispered to me, why are you wasting your time? He's far beneath you. He's not pride. He's far a junior to me. Far a junior. Far, far a junior. You understand? I look younger. You understand? When I tell somebody I'm older than your grandmother, it's not a play. It's not a play. <laughs> you understand? We've been living before we were born. I'm not making words. I believe you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And it came to pass. The reason why we use that pastor's example is to make you understand. Before you start saying, no, 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 Jesus never made a mistake. This is like we said, don't be hasty in your judgment. Wait first, let's learn. Because one will even show you where God himself acknowledged that he made a mistake. Yes, sir. And if God Almighty, yes. who made all things, yes. acknowledged that he made a mistake, yes. then who is Jesus? And if you say Jesus is that God Almighty, then Jesus is acknowledging. <laughs> he made mistakes. The thing is not about the mistakes you make. The thing is about not remaining in it. Yes, sir. Come out of it. Yes. Someone say, but I keep repeating the same mistakes. It doesn't matter. It just means that you are growing. Yes, sir. Because you are still being perfected. Yes, sir. You are still being perfected. No child was born to obey, but you learn obedience. So say, I, I, don't, I don't obey anybody, I only obey God. Have you seen God to exactly. obey? When last did God talk to you? Exactly. The pastor you walked out on, 
That's the person God is using to talk to you. You walked out on him. Now you want to obey God where? On the streets. Don't worry. The economy of America will make you obey God. <laughs> you think things are getting better for the people of the world? The future is dark for them. <laughs> and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also carnal, flesh. He is governed by the five senses. That's what it meant. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also, after that. After that now, now, Moses here did not live to see any giant in his lifetime. Even the promised land that was promised the children of Israel, Moses knew there were giants there. Because the 12 spies came. Amen. Nice. Did they not come? Right? Let's talk to this brother. This one's an answer. The twelve spies came, have we? Yes. And they brought graves, pomegranates, and said, These things are heavy. Yes. We saw giants there. We are like grasshoppers in their sight. Yes. Right? They said that to Moses. Yes. Now, the question did Moses see those giants? No. 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 He didn't see them, sir. Did he see them, sir? So Moses is acknowledging. There were giants in those days. Yes. Even though he himself did not see yes. them. But he's, he's trying to tell us here now their origin. He says here, yeah, and there were giants in the earth in those days, even though he did not see them. But he's acknowledging in the visions that I saw. Because this account he's giving, he was not there. This report he's giving concerning Noah. Noah, between Noah and Moses, you are looking at over a million years. Or give or take, if you want to minimize it, you will say 10,000 years. Because Moses, Jumeirah alone was already 500 years. Yes. Here already. Yes, sir. There was still Nimrod coming. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Then the, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 10, this is chapter 6. In Genesis chapter 6, in Genesis chapter 10 verses 25, the Bible says the earth was divided yes. in the days of Peleg. Yes, and Pilate pre existed many other generations before uh, Abraham's father. And then before Abraham. You are looking at different generations. So Moses is growing. God is taking him back, 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 back into man, spiritual sight. He could go backwards. Of course, if you could see Genesis, what is this for him to see? And now he's telling you the sequence of events, how giants originated. He says, and there were giants in the earth in those days. He calls it those days. Wow, those days. And also, after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of renown. Which were old, right? Yeah. Men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of men. And what? And the imagination of their thoughts, of their hearts, was only evil continually. Now, um, verses 6 now. And repented the law that he had made man. God, the word is nakem. It means regret. It also means mistake. Ash, I made a mistake. Because if you regret something, what are you actually acknowledging? If you regret, please answer now. Huh? Right? 
Yes, sir. Yes. Do you regret a good decision or a bad decision? Which means what? It was a mistake. Even though initially it looked good. When God made man, he said it's good, right? But now God said, man, this was a big mistake. This was a huge mistake. God said, I, I made a mistake. Yeah, concerning King Saul, First Samuel chapter 15, he said, I, I regret for making Saul king. I, sh I made a mistake. And God did not just make this mistake one time. Many times, like now, King Saul. You get to see, we'll show you again, where God did acknowledge again that he made mistakes. I, so God, God, I question, are you still growing? No, God will tell you, when it comes to my relationship with man, I'm growing in it. When it comes to relating with man, I'm growing in learning how man behaves, how man makes decisions. That's why when we tell people, God doesn't know everything. They say, how dare you say God doesn't know everything? Wait, did you ever read in the Bible what the prophet by the name of Hanani said? People don't know there's such a prophet. There was a prophet by the name of Hanani who said, he said, um, the eyes of the Lord yes. runs to and fro in all the earth on the behalf of those whose heart are right with him. So, those whose heart are right with God, wherever they are in the earth, God watches them. Yes. Yes. But does God watch over every human being on the face of the earth? No. no. He said only for those whose heart are right before him. Now, the reason why people think God knows everything is because when they say the eyes of the Lord run to and fro in all the earth. Yes, it is true. All the earth for only those whose heart are right with him. That means if I travel to Japan now, God knows who everything about yes, me. Sir. Even when I moved to Japan. Wow. See. But to think that God knows everything about every human being on the face of the earth, no. Somebody said, but why did he say Jacob and I love? He saw have I hated. You see, even the even the we we're gonna take a class and understand predestination because some people think that predestination comes, that God already planned it, that you will make this mistake, you will do this, and all that. Some that will try to encourage people, that God already knew the mistakes you were going to make, and all that. No, 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 no. That's not how predestination works. In every predestination, there are two sides. The benefits and the costs. That's what he did with the children of Israel. He gave them a law. He said, if you obey, you'll be blessed. If you disobey, you'll be cursed. You choose. He even told them to choose. Yes. And then later on he told them, I advise you choose life. But not all did. In fact, the Bible says they all fell short of that glory. Yes. You see, when it comes to predestination, God gives you, he makes available what the benefits are if you go his path. And what the challenges and the punishment and the cost will be if you grow if you go contrary. That's even the reason why we come to the house of God to study the word of God. Exactly. If you were predestined already to succeed, then you don't need church. Yeah. That's true. You see, yeah, I don't know where you listen to. You don't need church. Yeah. Do you need somebody? Okay, fine. You sign up to go to medical school, right? Yes, sir. Yes. For what reason? To be a medical doctor. Why are you not just a doctor without going to medical school? And you think God is stupid? No. But the degree is available. Yes. For the qualified. Yes. Most qualified, do what they want you to do. Then they will they know they're telling you we are not holding anything. You want to be a doctor, we have a do you know those certificates have been printed down already? They have been printed. And the guy to even finally sign it. It's probably walking on the streets. Yes. 
who is the head of the board of medical students yeah. and medical licensing in New Jersey? Or, he is working on the street. Yeah. Somebody signed his own. Now he's signing for others. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it's true. But they are telling you, meet our requirements. Yes. We'll give you what, yes. what you deserve. Yes. I'm not holding it. The medical board, do they own a school? No. no. But you're responsible for the school you go to. We'll set an exam for you. You say you went to school. <laughs> we learn phlebotomy, uh, anatomy, how intestine moves. No problem. Come and write the exam. If you pass, we'll give it to you. Do you understand? So, the degree has already been predestined. Yes, sir. But it doesn't have your name. Exactly. That's the point. You can ensure your name is on the certificate. Yes. Right? Yes. That's how it is with God. Wow. The future is ahead. Yes. It's bright. The but you can decide whether your name will be part of it. Name, name, Think about it. The Bible says, whosoever's name was not found in the book of life. You are the one to ensure your name remains there. Someone said, I didn't even know they wrote my name. <laughs> that's why that's what we're learning the word of God. Yeah. Ah, you're offended. Let's pray. Oh. You see that? Because ask yourself, what, what, are, what are you a Christian for? So, say, so that we can make it to heaven. Listen, listen, let, don't mock God. God is not stupid. Yes, sir, he's not. You ask yourself, this unvictorious Christian life that is not attractive, not even to humans, much less God, that you are living, you think God will want you to come near him? Even when King David declared, lift up your heads, O ye gates, he was challenged. He said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and lift up your heads, ye everlasting doors. Not the gates of hell. The gates of hell are not everlasting doors. Because hell will be thrown into the lake of fire, so it can't be everlasting doors. He's talking about the gates of heaven. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. They asked him, who is the king of glory? He called himself the king of glory. So, so they say, that was Jesus. King David was speaking that for himself. He didn't know Jesus. Because he was, he was, he, he, he actually, King David, in 2 Samuel chapter 7, what did he say? He said, the Lord has increased my glory. Yes. He calls it Gedula. Yes. God has multiplied my gedula. I mean, he has gedula my gadal, actually. Increase is gedula. Glory is gadal. Arrogant advancements. He said, God has increased my advancement arrogantly. You see why he now said, God, he said, lift up your eyes, so he gets, and the king of glory shall come. In. He said, who is the king of glory? He said, the Lord, strong and mighty. Strong and mighty. Mighty in battle. He acknowledged he fought battles. Mm -hmm. He fought battles and won. You, you have not won any. Mm -hmm. Say, heaven is my own. <laughs> yeah, you, you can have the world and give me Jesus. Jesus, I don't want you. <laughs> Jesus, <I> don't. <laughs> we need the word. You say you are giving the word to Satan. Uh, yeah. But Jesus said, leave me alone. For me, I have the whole world and I have Jesus. <laughs> yes. So you can have the whole world. This world is Babylonian system. It's a Babylonian world. What are you still doing here? Exactly. Swallow that poison and die and go. <laughs> you can have the whole world. And give me, give me I take the whole world. And I still have Jesus. <laughs> Is this of duty? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. The Bible says the Lord regretted. I for making man on the earth. And look at the next line. It says he's grieved his heart. God was grieved. Mistakes can make you grieve. It's true. I why did I do this thing to myself like this? 
Eish. Why did I let this thing happen to myself like this? I made a blunder. God is acknowledging that he made a mistake for making man. No, why, why, why? God said, honestly, I made a mistake. Now, now, until now that Moses wrote this, no man knew God can regret that he made a mistake. Go, go to Numbers chapter 23. The same Moses wrote Numbers. He wrote the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 23, please. See what Balaam the prophet said. Look at verses 19. <clears throat> Read. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Stop. It says God is not the man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should change his mind. That he should regret. That he should repent. But he did. Unknown to Balaam. God had done this before. He was just trying to talk about how he was trying to talk about the integrity of God. He said, forget to. Even that integrity can be questionable. The same Moses who wrote Genesis wrote Numbers. He said, look at this Bela. You don't know God. Yet he was a prophet of God. Bela was a prophet of God, but he didn't know some aspects about God that Moses knew. Father, reveal yourself to me. And many Christians today, many great men of God today, are following the revelation of Balaam. Moses is saying, God can regret that he even blessed you with a husband. He blessed this one with a child. He blessed this one. God can regret. God can say, ah, it was a mistake. Oh, I should not have allowed Susanna to be pregnant. Oh. God can regret. So you know, God does not regret. God does not change his mind. Bela, you don't know God. Let's read. How come Moses knew these things about God? And yet Balaam, the first prophet of God before Moses, the prophet of God before Moses, didn't know this about God. There's a difference. We'll show you the reason why. Go to Exodus 32. Go to Exodus 32. And then maybe we'll close with that. Have you been blessed so far? Yes, sir! Very blessed. That's <clears throat> why there's a way somebody may want to accuse you and challenge you about God. And you can see to the person. You see this God you are trying to defend. I know him more than you. I <laughs> I know him more than you. Hey. No, at this age you tell me, tell your friend. <laughs> Go to Exodus thirty three with me. Exodus 33. Let's read verses 11. So that you can know and see clearly why Balaam was limited in revelation. When he says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should change his mind, he should repent. Balaam did not know much about God. He did not know much about God. He didn't. Read verses 11 of Exodus chapter 33. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as the man speaketh unto his friend. You see that? And he turned you see that? Yes. Moses was somebody God who whispers secrets to. Yes. Face to face. Yes. As a man talks to his friend. Yes. But with Balaam, God was not like that with Balaam. Yes. Balaam was just his messenger. Yes. He was not his friend. Yes. But for Moses... Jesus, Jesus said, I call, he said to the disciples, I call you friends, for a friend knows everything 
about the other. See that? So you see, Moses knew better than Bela. Yes. And remember, when Bela was going to curse Moses, God had to send an angel to go and warn Bela to forbid his madness. Because he was, Bela was coming to prophesy against his friend. Yes. Now, between Balaam and Moses, who do you think will know more? Moses. Why? Because Moses, he, that was God's friend. Yes, sir. And everyone knew it. Yes, so when Balaam was saying, God is not the man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. No. Brother, you miss it. Moses is saying, God can regret. God can repent. God can repent. Yes, God can do it. Yes, God can acknowledge he made a mistake. Yes, Balaam said, no, God does not do so. Uh, Moses said, you don't know God. Even your own story, I'm the one writing it. Exactly. Yeah. The time is that, <laughs> yeah. the time is that because Moses and Balaam never met. Yes, sir. Balaam was on the summit of a mountain. The children of Israel with Moses were at the base. Yes, Yet yeah, the angel that confronted Moses came to report, that confronted Balaam, yeah, yeah. came to tell Moses everything. Yes. And he wrote about Balaam. Yes. Balaam to this day did not know. That Moses knew everything about him. Yeah, they never met, met face to face. And, and this Moses was not an American. He was not working for the CIA. But he could not the plans of the enemy. Father, reveal yourself to me. Ah. You know, some people, they sing it in song. I want to know you more. Stop it. it. That does not move God. I does not move, but Moses never sang it as a song. Yes, so that you are crying, I want to know you more, you are somersaulting. After you finish somersaulting, carry yourself and, <laughs> and dress up before you enter the street. So I don't think that uh, you, you are crazy. <laughs> I want to know you more. I want to know your ways. That's not how Moses did it. I'm not saying the song is bad. It's a good song, quite frankly. But you see, you singing it, you must know that you mean what you are saying. Yes. And first of all, do you know who you are even telling you want to know more? Yes. Because if you say you want to know him more, it means you already know him. Yes. And that's in the corridors of fatherhood. Yes. So how well do you know him? Yes. To not desire more. Yes. The more you try to know God, the more dangerous it becomes. Because one mistake like this, it will finish you. <laughs> Lord, I'm <miss> you, <laughs> so I say, well, thank you for telling me. I don't want to know God at all. <laughs> and you have here. He has already marked all of you that are here. You must know him. <laughs> blessed be God. God. Have you been blessed tonight? In our next class, we're going to discuss more. <laughs> we're going to tell you more. Because before we start looking at the mistakes Jesus made, let's start looking at the mistakes God made. Then it will be easy to understand the mistakes Jesus made. And why are we trying to make you understand the mistakes Jesus made? Is it to embarrass Jesus? No. It's for you to learn. Because quite frankly, Jesus did not need to die the way he died. So as a God planned his death, God didn't. According to the Bible, God did not plan... Jesus is dead that way. And the truth of the matter is God never planned for Jesus to die because Jesus didn't need to die to be a savior. He said, believe. Is that not what John 3.16 says? Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, did he say in his death? No. Did he say after he dies? No. No. While he was alive. They shall not perish, but they shall have what? The fullness of life. Everlasting life. They will live their life to the full. They are full length of time. And the Bible says in John chapter 8, many believed. In their lifetime, while Jesus was still alive, many believed. Many did. From verses 28 of John chapter 8, many did. Of course, there were some who did not believe. There were others who saw miracles before they believed. There were others only there to eat first bread and fish that Jesus multiplied. 
before they believe in John chapter 6. Jesus said, because you have eaten fish and bread, you now believe. They say it's true. We believe. It was very sweet. Please do more. <laughs> Jesus said, no, I am the bread of life. There's something more than that. Yeah. But the Bible says people believed. So Jesus did, not, Jesus did not need to die to be a savior. In case you don't know, see why he died. John, sorry, Matthew chapter 27. Let's look at verse 16. Verse 18, we mean. Oh, I'll read. For he knew that for every he had delivered him. Okay, start from verse 16 to verse 18, so that you know it's Jesus they are talking about. Yes, sir. Read. Start from verse 15. From verse 15 to verse 18. One, two, go. Now at that the Father was born to be born to the people of Israel, whom they would. You see that? Yes, sir. For envy, they gave Jesus away. Let's see. See what the envy did. Read on. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sat unto him, saying, I have not much to do with that judgment, for I suffer many things this day in the church. But the chief of Israel had persuaded the Lord that they should ask for our blessing. You see that? They said destroy Jesus. Because of envy. It had nothing to do with God. The death of Jesus had nothing whatsoever to do with God. God had no hand in it. So all the ones that, all the, why, all those years that the preachers have been saying, Jesus needed to die to save you, it is not true. Jesus was killed because of envy. Period. That's what the Bible, that's what you just read. God had no hand with the death of Jesus. So he said, why didn't God help him? You see, you see, we told some people last evening, we said, that's why Jesus told his disciples, pray with me. Yes. King Solomon said, "Cause is anyone who does not have anyone praying for him. Yes. Jesus didn't have anyone praying for him. That's why he died a cost man. Mm -hmm. King Solomon said, "Cause be to the one who does not have anyone praying for him. Jesus is always the one praying for others, but he didn't have anyone praying for him. And King Solomon said, you are cursed if you don't have anyone praying for you. So he said, then I need to be praying for myself. You better start praying for yourself. Because King Solomon said, you are cursed if you don't have anyone praying for you. Sometimes you find some people who don't come to church, but they have prayerful mothers, fathers. They are better. So you better start praying now. Say, brother, I need to start praying now. Success forevermore, and I'm prosperous forevermore. I'll never fail in my life. I'll never fail in my life. I'll never fail in my life. So, from what we just studied in this introductory class, God is trying to let us know there are people you can create opportunities for. He said, but even as you create opportunities for them, still prepare yourself to still be disappointed. Because there are some opportunities that you end up regretting for create that you created for others. But it doesn't mean it doesn't stop you from creating opportunities. It's part of learning. So say this one, you did it, uh, I've learned who you are. Uh. Oh, no, I've changed. Please drink a glass of water, sister. I can't drink that water. I'll use it to water flower. Thank you very much. Even the flowers. Uh, <laughs> if you even give that water on the flower and the flower dies, then you know ah. Uh, this water you key flower. <laughs> I mean, this auntie is terrible. Oh. But, but, but think about this. Decide for yourself. Now, I finished preaching, but I just want to tell you. You decide for yourself not, not to be an agent of evil. Oh. Decide for yourself that you are not going to be somebody people regret ever crossing paths with. You know, sometimes there are some people other other people can be mean to. 
And you may look at those mean people as being wicked. They are not wicked. They know this one. We know this one. But but just decide that you will not be an agent of regret. Or an instrument that will bring regrets to others. Now, I'm not saying that I have not made mistakes. I have made mistakes too that I'm not proud of. And there might, some, there might be some people who say, man, look, man, but I don't want to have anything to do with him. It's true. But how about you? Do you know what is coming your own way? See, because if people like us now can be going through, for, going through what we're going through because of the mistakes we made, how about you that is just starting? Do you know what awaits you, even your child? Because I've had to say that to somebody. I say, I don't pity you. I only just feel sorry for your child. That child that is growing up. He's five years old, Abby. Don't worry. Because we know what is coming at 25. Don't worry. Then at 27. Don't worry. That, I pity that child. Just, because you still need me. Because I've seen everything. It has played out already. You still need me. I said, but I just hope I'll be available. And even if I am available, I just hope that I'll be willing. Because I still have the right to my choice. I hope I'll be willing. Don't do things that can make you cry the cry that will make birds gather around your house. You know what that means? That somebody has died. Where birds will gather. (laughs) <laughs> Does he cry like that? No. Learn. How do you think God felt? Cry. God Almighty. The, the Hebrew word, if you study that word, regret, isn't it? It also means God cried. It means God cried. Man. I regret creating this human being. <laughs> God forbid. Lord, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. That's the same God we're still serving, in case you don't know. That's the same God you probably want to come and meet. And you say, who is this one coming? Think about it. Why does God need a book of remembrance? Come on. Why does God? Because there are some people, God, there are some families, God have decided he wants to forget. And God is even calling for the book of remembrance because he had a conversation between both of you. Two Christian sisters, or a Christian sister and a Christian brother. And so God calls for the book of remembrance in Malachi chapter 3, verses 16. Also, when God had their conversations, he demanded the book of remembrance to be brought, to be open, for him to see what initially has been said. You see that? The predestination of every man is in a book. But your choices can either lead to the fulfillment of that or not, your choices. And God hears the choices you are going to make through your conversations. He's calling for the book of remembrance. He calls it book of remembrance because there are some, some things God deliberately wants to forget. Because, I mean, relating with humans is challenging, brother, I'll say. That's why there are some people. Isn't it amazing? God remembered to open the womb of Rebecca. What is it about her? Did God forget? Because it is that family, they are too much of I even told Abraham to run away. Wow, you see these things. Beautiful ladies like this come from families that God does not remember. Fine men come from heritages that God deliberately wants to forget. The Bible says, Lord cried, seeking the favor of God, but he never found it. The Bible says he sought God in tears. Because of what he did to Abraham, God forgot about him. The Bible says he cried. Apostle Peter narrated it. He cried before God. The Bible says he wept sorrowfully daily, seeking for God's mercy. God never forgot what he did to his friend Abraham. Abraham, the friend of God, and Lord, you, you did this to your uncle, who was kind to you. <laughs> there are things God does not forget to and the Bible says God never helped Lot. It's amazing. Even the angels he sent. One made Lot's wife turn to a pillar of salt. What's the point of escaping when you don't have any company? And Lot had to be sleeping with his daughters to have children. His own daughters he once carried. He once named. 
I said, you eat your own vomit. What you did to your uncle Abraham? You think I've... <laughs> That's why, again, when you are taking a decision concerning another person, even a Christian, do you know whether God was looking towards that Christian's direction? Because if you want to harm me now, do you know what I just told God that made God decide to look at me? And it was when God was looking at me, that's when you were doing me harm. And God said, you did this thing to me. Okay, okay, I've marked you. Because God is invisible. You don't know what he saw before you came. I know you, you dressed where you came. You joined you were writing notes, hiding in the pages of your notes. You know what you did, what you said, what somebody said to you on the phone. You know. So be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Don't be somebody that God wants to forget deliberately. Even one time said to the children of Israel, he says, your sins I will throw into the sea of forgetfulness. I mean, when, when terminologies like these are being used, does that look like God is joking? No. It's not your me too. And you're not the first human being he's dealing with. That's why we said your tears does not move him. You can cry and say, myself, Oh God, I'm a woman of sorrow. God said, You are not the first. Two. Ask Mary. <laughs> you are not the first. So put yourself right. Amen. Amen. I will never fail in my life. Ah, you don't sound like you mean it. I will never, never fail in my life. Honestly, you don't sound like you mean it. My life is getting better and better and better and better and better and better and better. God remembers me every day. God remembers me every day for good. God has memories of me for good. Say, God has memories of me for good. God has memories of me for good. Ah, when God remembers me, he's excited. Because I'm his messenger. I'm his servant. I'm his preacher. I feed his flock for his glory. And they win all the time. God has good memories of me. Say, say. See, for, for, you, for those of you on campus, when you go back to school, decide every day when you go to class, God has good memories of me. He knows I'm on this campus. That's why nothing can go wrong on this campus. Well, you don't sound it. You don't sound like you mean it. And even in your job, when you go to your school, your office, you say, God has good memories of me. You see why you should be excited to pray for people? And someone say, 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 come, let's pray. You say, why? I, I've been praying. You say, no, don't worry. I'm different from you. God has good memories of me. When I talk to him, he hears me. Let's pray. You see that? Because I'm the answer. I'm the one you've been waiting for. I'm the reason why God will help you. You see? And Something you have been arrogant. No, I'm confident. It's just being confident of this very thing. That he who has begun this good work will surely complete it. There is no unfinished project in my life. Yes, sir. He will surely complete it. Ah, I don't think you mean that. Yeah. yeah. You see, those that God don't remember are the ones who pray, oh God, arise, arise on my behalf. No, not me. God does not even need book of remembrance concerning me. He sees me all the time. Because I bring him good memories. Daily memories. You can't be saying that to God is sitting. You don't mean it at all. You don't mean it. You don't mean it at all. God has glorious memories of me. <laughs> He has good memories of me. He has good memories of my children. He has good memories of Champions Royal Assembly North America. He has good memories of my name, of my academics, of my finances, of my businesses, of my health, of my spouse, of my heritage forevermore. Glory to God. God has glorious memories of me. That's why God can never forget me. God can never forget me. That's why he answers every prayer that I pray. He answers every prayer that I pray. Because he has glorious memories of me. God has good memories of me. He never forgets. He knows me by name. Yes, sir. 
He doesn't need to see any tear that I cry because I don't cry. <laughs> I'm joyful in his verses. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm a success forevermore. <laughs> and I'm prosperous forevermore. I will never, never fail in my life. Yes, sir. The Bible says the communication of thy faith will become effectual. By the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you, there is no bad thing in me. God has good memories of me. Ash. He may have forgotten you all this year, but now that you have come here, say, God has good memories of me. <laughs> That's why all those why it looks like people went ahead of you because God didn't remember you until now. And from now on, you will become the focus of heaven. I'm the focus of heaven. I'm heaven's delight. <laughs> because I'm heaven's best. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, Blessed be God who has spoken volumes of us. In heavenly places, by spiritual men. <laughs> God said, "Have you considered my servant Job?" <laughs> see, see, God had memories of that guy. In spite of the best mistakes, we don't make mistakes in Christ. God has glorious memories of me. <laughs> From now, all the days of my life. Yes. Yeah. Think about it, Zachariah needed to pray for an angel to come and tell him your prayers is heard. Your wife Elizabeth will have a child. Mm -mm. I, I'm not in that lane of life. I don't even need to pray. God has already blessed her with children. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah. God has glorious memories of me. That's why there's no badness in my camp. There's no badness in my household. Yes, sir. There's no badness in my businesses. There's no badness in my education. Yes, sir. There's no badness in my finances. Uh, uh, listen, where was God when you spent the last hundred dollars? Okay. No, there's no badness in my finances. God always remembers my bank account and my finances. Uh, where was God when it was only $1,000 left? And he didn't remember to fill it up. No, not anymore. Yes, sir. We don't run dry. Listen, I hope you know I'm not doing positive talk. Here. I'm acknowledging the good things that are in me. He says, therefore, my faith becomes effective. My persuasion becomes potent. Yes, sir. Uh -uh. Someone say, how much do you have in the account? Say, I don't know. I don't, I don't need to know. Because God fills it up every time. Yes, sir. King David said, my cup run it over. You know, there are some people. They, they are fond of using the word total. 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 Yeah? How do you pronounce it? Toro. Okay. Toro. <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Not me. I don't need to know the the toto, the, the, the total or uh, toro. <laughs> I don't need to know that one. Because it cannot be quantified. Yes, sir. Because God always remembers you. And when God remembers you, he looks for the things that needs to be replenished. Yes, sir. So between yesterday and now, how much did they have in their bank account? God said, no, no, I need to fill it up. I need to fill it up. You will see it. Spirit money, come in, come in, come in. Spirit money. Some of you, you receive bonuses that they will, they, they will tell you the story behind it. And the story behind the bonus you have no knowledge about. Spirit money. 
They will tell you you went to one hospital, this and that. They treated you for what they never treated you for anything. Yes, I received it. I received it. Just yesterday in, in the news, early this morning actually in the news, Citibank made a mistake of posting of posting $176 million to another company's account. They now said to return it. The company said we cannot. They only told the company. They said, they said to the company, we were only owing you $5 million. They said, we don't know. $176 million is in that account. Citibank now is filing a lawsuit. Lawsuit. Which judge wants to sit on that case? They said it was a mistake. Good mistake. Uh, spirit money. <laughs> oh, it's my time. It's my turn. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, with all the organizational structure, City Bank has. They made such a mistake. Yes, a good mistake. They moved to my account. Who will trust that kind of bank? But your money is already there. Ah! Uh, favor. I'm a magnet favor. Now say this. Say I'm a favor magnet. Say like you mean it. I'm a favor magnet. Yes, sir. I'm a high favor magnet. Divine favor magnet. Yes, sir. Palakata Rosotos. Le Gaba Duska. Talk to the Lord. Le Mantalia. Control. Control your finances now. Le Brandia. Listen. Amen. There are billions flying over your head. Yes, sir. Control it. Control it. Paparade. Bosoto Prataya. Amen. Yes, sir. Collect it. Yes, sir. Raza Dale Bosoto Prata. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we're just seeing it move. It's moving. Now control it by speaking in tongues. Sala, brother. Control it. Papa Resente. Banda Satayas. Reba Talia. Zidivalaka Talias. Reba Kata Mansutu Beleketes. Harade Kevasata. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> oh, man. There are mistakes we don't make. Yes, sir. That people don't know. Strange money will just enter your ca account. <laughs> this is the season for glorious mistakes. <laughs> in your favor. In your favor. <laughs> oh, man. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Take your seat, please. Let's talk to those who have not made Jesus the Lord of their lives. If you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, you have an opportunity to do so. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, there are people who say, Well, I, I believe in God. Well, believing in God is not what will bring you salvation, because that's not what God wants. The Bible says in James chapter, in James chapter 2, verses 19, Demons. Devils believe in God. Somebody said, but I believe in, in Jesus. Believing in Jesus, according to John 3, 16, is not what will bring you salvation. Because when Jesus walked the face of the earth, you and I were not here. That's the truth. 
Someone said, but I believe in the death of Jesus. The death of Jesus was a cost. Jesus died a cost to man. The Bible says, cost is anyone that hangs on the tree. Galatians 3, verses 13. So Jesus died a cost to man. You can't believe a cost to be saved. Someone say, well, so what are we supposed to believe? The Bible says we should believe the resurrection of Jesus. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. That's what God wants us to believe, the resurrection of Jesus. Somebody says, what good would that do for me? The Bible says, believing that resurrection is what will make you righteous. It's not the good things you do that makes you righteous. But by simply believing the resurrection of Jesus is what makes you righteous. And the Bible says, with the heart man believed unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, there are preachers who say, well, when you give your heart to Christ, God gives you his righteousness. No. What Paul said in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 is, when you believe the resurrection of Jesus, you become righteous to confess the lordship of Jesus to be saved. He says, with the heart man believed unto righteousness. And what we believe with our heart is the resurrection. And then he says, with the mad confession is made unto salvation. And you can do both now. So I'd like to give you an opportunity to do so. And mean this words with all your heart. Say this words. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you for your Son, Jesus. My Lord. My Lord. I, call him Lord I call him Lord because I believe, because I believe. He, rose he rose from the dead for my righteousness. For my righteousness. And, at moment, and at this moment, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life from this day forward to the glory of God, my Father. Amen and amen. If you have made that declaration, I would like to congratulate you and welcome you into the family of God. Amen. I would like to pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son and your daughter who have acknowledged the lordship of the name of Jesus Christ. Haven't believed that you raised him from the dead. Your word says, whosoever come unto you, you will know why it's cast away. Even as these ones have come unto you, may they never be a cast away. May their feet never slide. And those of us through whom salvation came unto them, may we also never be a cast away. May our feet never slide. And at the end of the day, may we all spend eternity with you in glory. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now you may ask, what if I still make mistakes? It doesn't matter, you're growing. That's why you need to be perfected. Amen. The Bible says the saints are being perfected. Amen. So am I a saint? Yes, you are. A saint that needs what? Perfecting. Amen and amen. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Lord, <clears throat> let this mark a new beginning in my life. A new chapter of unprecedented, phenomenal, unsubstantiated, Success, wealth, prosperity, increase, favor, excellence, advancement, spiritual growth, excellent spiritual maturity in Christ. Talk to the Lord. Leka parodovo sendegede ashkina. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy.
fly 